Okay, so let's finish the uh, second part of quantum information. So one very important theorem uh, in quantum mechanics is the so-called no cooling theorem. What does it mean? It means you cannot copy an arbitrary state. I tell you that I give you a quantum state, and then I say copy it. You don't need to know what it is, copy it. It is impossible, unless for some uh, special state like in those uh, basis states that we mentioned before, zero and one. But if I give you a general state, such as sun, such as psi, right, equals to alpha zero plus beta one. This is the most general state. Alpha and beta can be the complex number, right? So this serves as a part of review. Just remind you that in quantum computing, this is one qubit. You can have two basis states, zero and one. Right? In classical computing, you either store zero or one. But in quantum computing, a quantum bit can be a linear superposition of the basis state, right? This is a second time I mentioned this, the basis state. So it can be alpha, zero plus beta. I give you one qubit uh, and ask you to copy. You won't be able to copy. If you try to do something to copy, you would destroy the original state, OK? So you can try to look at the proof. Uh, I have that in my book. I just Google, right? No cooling theorem. So you cannot copy. All right, so you take this for granted. If that is the case, how do we do error correction? We already say that uh, you've got a lot of error. This, is, this look, like, look like an analog computing, right? If I, the QB is not exactly zero, a little bit different from zero. 0 0.0000, I mean, 0.99999 plus 0.00001i, right? Because it can be a complex number, zero. And then plus 0 0.0001 beta. This is very close to zero, but it is not zero, right? Uh, we want to correct. How do we correct it? So basically, what we do is the so-called syndrome measurement. In classical error correction, we sometimes use the so-called repetition code, right? So if you want to transmit zero, you duplicate it three times. And then if there's an error, it may flip the bit, but if the error, as long as the error is not too large, not too large, it might just flip one, right? This become a majority vote. Just like you call, I call my mom in Asia, and I say something, she cannot hear. I just repeat a few times, eventually she got what I said. That is error correction. But since there is no cooling theorem, then we cannot copy as it is. I can say, let me just copy many qubit and send to you. Then I, I won't have error. You just detect which one is correct, right? So what we do is the so-called syndrome measurement, right? Just like I, if I, I'm say I go to the doctor, I went to the doctor, and then um, of course they can test the virus in my body. They say, oh, this is a regular flu or this is COVID, right? Or if the uh, doctor is very experienced, maybe just listen to my voice, my cough, my take my temperature, the syndrome of this error, this, uh, this sickness, he or she may already told that, oh, this is just a regular food, right? So this is something similar, but of course not exactly, because we're talking about classical thing, it cannot be quantum, right? What we do is to create an entanglement. Let's say we try to transmit an arbitrary state psi, and there will be some error. This is the error channel, we model it as a gate. If it got the error, then it will change. What we do is to make it entangled with some ancillary qubit. So this is something you always see in quantum computing. Right? You learned this in E225. Uh, here we don't emphasize so much. But this is the real qubit, and these are the so-called ancillary qubit. So there, the qubit is very important, but useless at the end. Okay, So you make entanglement with this qubit. After this error correction, of this error channel, you change the real qubit, but they are entangled. Remember we talked about entanglement? But basically it's just that you make some correlation between two qubits. Now you change this qubit A, then I will just measure qubit B, which entangle in some way with qubit A. Then I probably know what happened to this real qubit. And then I apply a correction to the real qubit. I did not measure the real qubit. Right, for example, let's say my wife and I are entangled with a couple, right? 
Let's say when I'm very happy, she's very happy. So someone don't need to look at my, ask me, are you okay today, Hyun? Maybe just ask my wife, uh, how, how, do you, are you happy? Maybe she I'm not happy. They already know I'm not happy because we are entangled. But that, that guy doesn't need to ask me. All he needs to do is just say, hey, let, let's go, I treat you at lunch. And that make me happy. He did not measure because he know the ill day. If he measure, he asked me, I would be very angry and maybe punch him or something, right? Exactly the same concept, okay? So this is a very smart idea uh, about this error correction. We will discuss at the very end of this class, okay, of this semester, a little bit. So at the end, is quantum computing really so powerful? Uh, there is a myth there, right? It is not. It has a lot of information. As we said, if you have a state, then you have n qubit, you have 2 to the power n coefficient, right? Remember? n qubit, I will get 2 to the power n coefficient. So it is very profound. It has a lot of information, but unfortunately, I cannot get them one by one. Why? Anyone remind me why I cannot get the coefficient easily? Because when you measure, they collapse, right? And only at the collapse probability, it only related to the amplitude of this co coefficient. So yeah, you have a lot of information. I cannot use them directly. So you cannot use this to do one plus one. Classical computer will be much better. So they are very useful for some difficult problem that classical computer cannot do. And in order to get the information, you go through some destructive or constructive interference of this state. So at the end, you only have one state left over. And for example, I forgot exactly, like we ask something, if the, uh, let's say in Schwartz algorithm, we want to try to calculate the period of a function. That is very computational intensive. But we can do parallel processing at the same time. And through some very smart way, like what Shaw did, he came up with a uh, method so that after the measurement or all the quantum computing computation, you get a certain state. And that state is related to the period of your function. If you measure state which is 1, 1, 1, then it means your period probably is free. I forgot the algorithm now, but that's just what it means. Okay? If your function has a period of 4, then you will measure state 1, 0, 0. The chance of measure other states is very small. Okay, so that, that's why quantum computer cannot replace classical computer and it's a very powerful accelerator, right? So a few last week or something, the CEO of NVIDIA said something, quantum computing is not going to work in 10 years or 20 years, right? Then they start, all the quantum computing start company stock uh, plummet like 50% less, right, because of that, uh, which might be true, right? So you remember you're taking this class because, not because you think that you're going to be rich after you graduate. It's because you're interested in knowing the technology. You might not use quantum computing directly after you graduate, but you will understand the physics and definitely quantum sensing, quantum communication are very important. You combine your knowledge in classical computer and quantum computer plus electrical engineering, you actually open the space for yourself, right? So remember this. Okay, so here I conclude the uh, basic of the quantum information. Any questions? Okay, if, yeah, please. Uh, can you? Mm -hmm. The, the, okay, so I don't, I let, let me see if I understand you correct. Are you talking about, for example, I have n qubit? And then in classical computer, you have you can only store two to the power n possible number in the n qubit register, yeah. right? Yeah. In quantum computer, besides this, yeah. you actually can have a superposition of all these states. You can have a zero this state, a one this state. Oh. Yeah. So not just the n value you can store, but you actually 
You can say you can store two root power n complex number, right, with this n qubit. Of course, again, you cannot get them. And even you don't know how to write them, right, unless it's a result of some physical process. Yeah, good, Thank good question. Okay, then let me move forward. Now, what does a quantum computer